What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Heel. And welcome to the first of many Final Thoughts episode, James Madison edition. And basically, me and Ramesses here are going to sit and talk about any changes of heart we may have had since my Tuesday preview and score prediction of 34 to 17. And if you were checking on this a couple hours before kickoff to see if I was possibly going to allude to an upset, well, you can go ahead and get out of this video because I'm here to tell you right now today, that's not going to stink and happen. I don't care what's happening at the quarterback position. North Carolina will win this stinking football game and they will be able to ride O'Mary and Hampton and even bullet to the finish line should that be necessary. I'm not talking about all the other games that we're going to play, but against James Madison, that is the case. Um, yes, James Madison is averaging, giving up six and a half points per game, but seven of those were to Charlotte in week one. They got like 70 new guys on their team. They're trying to figure things out. And then they follow that up by beating Gardner Webb 13 to six, uh, who's 0 and 2 right now themselves. So, they haven't necessarily played the stiffest competition, and um, you know I think that there's a lot to be said about that because a lot of Tar Heel fans are saying that James Madison is somehow a step up in competition, but this is not the same football team that it was last year when they won 11 games and went to their first bowl game. Um, it's not that same football team at all. Uh, you know, this is a team that also has like 65 new guys and a new head coach. And so it's a very different team than what we saw last year. Now, is James Madison, you know, a, a decent program at its level? Yeah, 100%. 100%. But when we look from top to bottom at the current stages of both of these programs, with North Carolina maybe coming a little bit more into its own, you know, a little bit more of a uh, respectable 8-9 wins a season type ordeal, <clears throat> there's no reason that we should allow James Madison to come into Keenan Stadium and win this football game, and I just do not anticipate that happening. Um, and here's the reasons why. <clears throat> James Madison is, uh, they're limited on offense. Barnett uh, is kind of a dual threat guy, but he's not necessarily going to light you up through the air. And they want to run the football. Um, you know, I think, what was it, 70%, 70 to 75% of their plays are rushes. So they're throwing the ball as little as possible. Um, and that just happens to be what Carolina has been really good at this year. The front seven have not allowed uh, the three teams that we've played thus far, Minnesota, Charlotte, and North Carolina Central, to go over 100 yards rushing for the football game. And I don't anticipate that James Madison is going to be able to do that today. I mean, unless George Petaway breaks one or something like that, I think Carolina is going to be pretty stinking good at bottling things up and taking away that run. And I think that's definitely going to be an approach that Jeff Collins has. They are going to have to be cognizant of play action and um, the deep shots because JMU, I think like half of their total yards this year have come on about like eight to 10 plays where, you know, they're just hitting large chunk plays through the air. Um, so that is something they have to be cognizant of. And the secondary, as much as they want to play in the box, you know, to limit the run, you cannot get beat over, over the top. And, um, you know, I think that Jeff Collins is going to have a pretty good game plan in place. And I think that JMU is going to have some issues, uh, moving the football. I really do anticipate that there's a part of me that even wants to go from giving up 17 points to maybe maybe a, a 14 or maybe even 13, maybe a touchdown and two field goals. But I don't anticipate that they're going to be able to put up a ton of offense against our defense. But the big storyline here in this football game is, since it's not whether we win or lose, because I'm just going to go ahead and chalk this up as a W, it's looking forward. What does Jacoby Criswell, if 
he is the starting quarterback, which he should be the starting quarterback, um, given what we saw last week. I mean, it was just clear who was poised and collected in the pocket as opposed to who was um, just not comfortable, man. That's the best way to put it. It's probably the best PC way to put it. Just not comfortable. Um, so I think it's pretty, it's pretty uh, easy to see who should be getting the QB1 reps, uh, the majority of them, in this football game. Now, Coach Mac Brown has alluded to the fact that he wants to still play two quarterbacks. I can't stand the coaching carousel thing, um, or the, excuse me, the quarterback carousel thing. We need to find our guy. And if <clears throat> the central game was any kind of indication of who that guy could possibly be, I think it's Jagoby Criswell, and we got to find out what he's got because – I've seen enough from Connor thus far to know that um, I don't feel comfortable moving forward when we're talking about wins and losses <clears throat> with him under center, uh, just based off of the, the, the couple of games that we've seen, man. That's just, to be completely honest, fair, and uh, that's just my personal assessment. Um, but I do see promise with Jacoby Criswell, and so because I see that promise in Jacoby, from what he put on tape against Central, I got to see him get those QB1 reps, and I got to see if he can duplicate or even add on to the success that he had. And uh, I think that he will. I really do think that he will. I think Jacoby is going to come out today. He's going to throw the football around a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised for him to have 250 through the air, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had two to three touchdown passes today. And that's just me being completely honest with you. And if Jacoby has that kind of ball game against this James Madison team, which I still think is not even an average football team when you compare them to the teams that are coming up on the schedule, um, <clears throat> I think that it's going to show a lot of potential for this football team. The, the type of potential that I maybe thought – we had at the beginning of the year when I picked Carolina to go 11 and one because I didn't anticipate, uh, you know, the quarterback play, the struggles that we've had thus far. This would go a long way into helping me continue and not have to change said predictions because with the front seven playing well, with the defense as a whole playing much better this year thus far against lesser competition competition, albeit, you know, <clears throat> and then you got an All-American like O'Mary and Hampton who it doesn't matter if you block from her or not, the kid's going to stink and get a lot of yards. Um, all we need is competent quarterback play. You know, all we need is thinking competent quarterback play and this team can win a lot of football games. And that's what I'm looking for in this one. This is not about winning or losing. Carolina will be 4-0 at about 4 o'clock today, 1,600 for all you stinking military guys. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking specifically for what does Jacoby Criswell do to this offense? Can he open things up for the running game moving forward? And can he show that same poise and confidence that he had against Central in a game where he should get most of the snaps? So, that's really all I got in this one. I'm not really changing my prediction at all. <clears throat> I think Carolina's thinking wins, and they win convincingly. I think that they even start fast. I think Carolina's going to start fast in this one, even though JMU's had two weeks to prepare, right? I think Carolina's going to start fast in this one, and I do think Carolina's going to double them up at the end of the day. The line is 10.5 right now. Um, I think Carolina covers. I think Carolina covers. I don't think that this is necessarily a close football game, um, especially towards the latter stages. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to learn a lot about this team, and uh, we're going to have a lot to look forward to after this football game. So, like I said, comment down in the comment section real quick, man. We've got a couple hours before kick. Make sure you come hang out with your boy, 12 o'clock, JMU North Carolina, for the last non-conference game of the year. And uh, we'll see you there, baby. I appreciate it, Tario Nation.